Dr. Jerome Corsi has a PhD from Harvard University Political Science. He's currently senior staff writer at WorldNetDaily.com, where he works as an investigative reporter. He's a number one New York Times bestseller, I think three or four times in a row. Uh, he's an expert in political violence and terrorism. He's been a top terrorism advisor and negotiator. I'm not going to go over it all. He's had top secret clearances with uh, different uh, agencies, international development, done a lot of classified uh, work. For nearly 25 years, beginning in 81, of course, he developed and worked with banks throughout the United States and financial systems and marketing companies to assist banks in establishing broker deals and insurance subsidiaries to provide financial planning products and services to their retail customers. He is a noted financial services speaker and writer, publishing three books and numerous articles in professional financial services journals and magazines to run Corsi.com is his private site. And, and the reason I'm focusing in on that today is he really is one of the top experts on finance, on banks, on the economy. He's better known for all his political best-selling books and for his his journalism, but he really is uh, you know the expert when it comes to banking, but also uh, terrorist hostage situations. He's a smart cookie because when I hear him on other shows, sometimes people just say Dr. Dr. Corsi, you know, World Net Daily, and just think it's some pundit with his opinion. He's a really smart guy, and so I want to in the time we had about forty after with him, then I'm going to go to your calls if you want to hold. I want to walk through Trump, the attack on free speech, the Republican establishment. I want to walk through the economy, the Federal Reserve, record dumping of U.S. Uh, treasuries, continuing to say they're not going to raise interest rates. What does that signify? The geopolitical developments around the world. Why did Russia pull out of Syria on, you know, so quickly with no pre-announcement? We're going to learn a lot today on this front and more. And, of course, what Obama's planning in his last 10 months in office. Uh, so, Dr. Corsi, thank you for coming on with us today, sir. A great pleasure to be with you, Alex. Thank you. Where should we start? I just threw out a whole pallet of information and ideas. I mean, what do you think we should tackle first? Well, they're all really important issues and important questions. So you take your pick. I mean, we can start with Donald Trump. Uh, I have... Um, been very close to Donald Trump over the years. I mean, I've known Donald Trump for maybe 40 years, uh, going back to the Plaza Hotel when he owned it. And I think it's, I've said from for the beginning, uh, Donald Trump is the real deal. Uh, he's tapping into a tremendous dissatisfaction of the majority of Americans, what used to be called under President Nixon, the silent majority, uh, who are disaffected with both parties, are not happy with the Democrats at all, as the Democrats become increasingly socialist, Bill Ayers socialist, and or communist. I mean, Bernie Sanders is a good indication of that. And uh, unhappy with the GOP establishment in Washington, the John Boehners and the Mitch McConnells. So the Tea Party group has really abandoned the Republican Party establishment in DC and uh, abandoned Washington altogether. This is a a realignment of the electorate, which happens every 40 or 50 years, and it's undergoing right now. It's an historic moment in time. Uh, the last one, I think, happened in 1968 when Richard Nixon implemented the Southern strategy, and people forget that the Democratic Party uh, controlled the South and was segregationist uh, even after the before the Civil War and after the Civil War. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan was... Democratic. It was the Republicans and Eisenhower who introduced the first civil rights legislation. In 68, the conservatives in the South abandoned the Democratic Party and, and began to bond with Richard Nixon and the Republican Party. South is today much more of a Republican enclave. That was a realignment. We're going through another realignment. This realignment has nothing to do with ge geography. It's a fundamental middle America reaction against both the extreme left of the Democrats and the establishment of Republicans in Washington, D.C. And it won't easily be reversed. And Trump is going to continue to gain, I think, all the way to the 1237 delegates he needs to be the nominee on the first ballot. As a top political scientist, not just one of these fluff pundits, is the power structure arrogant, thinking they can stop a major realignment? You look at this realignment, some believe it may be the biggest in modern history because of the confluence of technology and other cascading events. And if you study history, any elite that tries to stop a realignment will cause explosive 
responses, and it tends historically, on almost every case, correct me if I'm wrong, to blow up in their face even worse. Well, I think, Alex, you're 100% right. The, the, um, for the establishment GOP, this is a fight to the death. Because the establishment GOP knows that it's going to lose its privileges, going to lose its money. It's about money, about you know K Street consulting firms paying pundits in D.C., uh, politicians getting rich. Excuse my in by uh, got the uh, intercom coming on. I apologize for that. Um, it's okay. It, it's a it's a fight to the death because the GOP establishment is going to lose its privileged hold on money in DC. And see, what people have to understand is that when you really get to know the GOP establishment in Washington, they're happy with the Democratic president. They weren't dissatisfied when Obama won re-election. That's why they say, why are they so arrogant though to, to just Mitch McConnell, we'll rather have Hillary, we don't care. I mean, they why are they so obvious? Are, are, they, are they that disconnected? Yes, they're that disconnected. They don't understand that the what they view as privilege and status quo, which is really, you know, the Republicans and the establishment Republicans have always been controlled by the multinational corporations. Going, Phyllis Schlafly's brilliant book in the 60s, you know, A Choice Not an Echo, which she wrote in, in the Goldwater years, and the Rockefeller Republicans with whom she was opposing were globalist supporters, multinational corporations, beyond borders, happy to spend money, happy to spend the federal treasury for welfare, did not fundamentally disagree with the Democratic Party, uh, just wanted themselves. What would have America been like if the true libertarian patriot movement with Barry Goldwater and Schlafly would have stopped them? I mean, uh, it, it, it'd be amazing. Well, we would have had a, a government much more, a country much closer to what our founders wanted, limited government. I mean, if you're going to really reform Washington, you've got to destroy both parties. And you got to start. There wouldn't have been the social engineering to end the family. I mean, we've been sabotaged by design. And this engineering, this whole realignment is a, the multinational corporations, which don't want governments, they want to have the corporations control all, and the communists and socialists on the left, which also want, you know, government to control all. I mean, I said from the beginning that when you go back to the roots of the Republican Party, in modern roots, and you see that, you know, there was the Bush family, Prescott Bush funding Hitler, uh, it was John Foster Dulles and Alan Dulles working through Brown Brothers Harriman to fund Hitler's rise that they were always happy with the Nazi formula. The Nazi formula is multinational corporations rule. And then there's a social welfare net for everybody else. The Nazis exactly, it's socialism social. with fascism sitting on top. Precisely, and that's the that's Hitler's formation. Hitler was the first to have, you know, the, really introduced this whole principle of universal health care. The Nazis felt like it was a great formula. Multinational corporations, no borders, endless war to kill the people that were needless and welfare for the ones you couldn't do anything else with. So welfare and fascist government at the top, controlled by corporations. So the Republican Party, GOP leadership in Washington took over the multinational corporation role of championing and the Democratic Party on the left took the underclass to champion and both parties were happy to sacrifice them in endless wars. Wow, you yeah. have just laid out the, the history of the last 70 years and here we are and they're fighting like the devil to stay in place. Dr. Corsi, lay out what you think. I'm going to skip this break. This is so important. I can't help it. Lay out how you think they're going to counter strike. Because we don't just see realignment here. We see Germany. We see Europe. We see Asia. We see the exact same formulas that we know the big think tanks have developed to bring in the radical jihadis, to bring in all these third world populations, to have them be clients of the government. And then when they attack, logic's been suspended. So we lose our rights. And then Merkel and Hollande and Obama don't get in trouble when we have San Bernardino's and theater attacks. What's the political calculus there? Because it's clearly completely a methodology. I mean, they're following an exact carbon copy plan in each country. It, it just seems so bold. Uh, that, and, and I think they're miscalculating because this is, I think they still think that the public isn't understanding what's happening because they look at dumbed down young people. They look at dumbed down, you know, some of the folks around them who are kind of yes men. I don't think they realize that with thinking people that are a giant minority 
that there is a huge awakening happening to the fact that we have basically terminal cancer style government that no quarter will be given uh, by either side. I mean, I think this is a hardening of the public. They talk about balkanization where they want us to come together for their agenda or they talk about how the country split. Well, the people are splitting forever with the social engineers. Well, I think this is why shows like yours are so important. You know, your your huge audience over the years of listening and being educated have woken up to the fact that they're being manipulated left and right, both political parties in fundamental agreement. Happy to have Obama elected, happy to have a CIA president sitting there, George H.W. Bush, CIA onward, free trade deals that both parties agree on. I agree with you. I think, Alex, this time it isn't going to work. So I think people are increasingly catching on to it. And of course, what they're going to try, they've got two very readily available techniques to try with you know, false flags and these other kinds of crises. One is the dollar has been so debased and the world debt structure is so high that I think at any moment they could trigger another debt collapse and major world economic crisis and try to scare everybody. They're going to lose their jobs, lose their houses, lose their families, lose everything because the global elites can let there be another worldwide collapse of the financial system. That's number one. Number two is they could try another war structure, a major terrorist attack on the level of a 9-11, which will frighten everyone, uh, push everybody closer into a Patriot Act, and have everybody quit thinking out of fear. Those are their only real two choices, and both are easily in the works. Uh, I think, though, the American public is beyond this. I think the American public realizes that they're being manipulated, and I think Donald Trump is articulating a strong campaign because he's not going to go along with the politically correct. He's going to call it out for what it is. And when Donald Trump starts laying into Hillary Clinton, who you know, I've got a book coming out in July on Hillary Clinton and the foundation, she is obviously a criminal. And Trump and his people are going to start saying, I don't know why she isn't in jail. He's already started this. He's going to deconstruct her chapter by verse. He's got names. I've got a whole series of articles. I'm going to start publishing and continuing publishing on the operatives, and the far left Soros funded extremes, groups like this Zach Exley working for Sanders, who is a you know communist operative who was planted in the Kerry campaign to start with and goes on and on. Soros funding these rent a group you know, rent a mob that you're going to see attacking Trump continuously. And imagine a novel where you've got a weirdo Nazi collaborator who tries to overthrow governments constantly and is successful, George Soros, running weirdo leftist groups who just randomly support shooting cops for no reason, trying to start a civil war so they can bring in federal control, openly saying they want this strong cities UN initiative to make our local governments behave. This is surreal, and then weirdos like Bill Ayers showing up at the Chicago attack on Trump supporters, and then Megyn Kelly is on TV today, I saw the promos, saying, I'll talk to the activists and the protesters who were attacked by Trump and had their free speech violated in Chicago. It is the inversion of reality, and everybody's really showing who they are at this part uh, of time, and it does show how desperate they are. Do you think they know they're on their last legs, or are Absolutely. they so delusional they think they can pull it out? No, well, I think well, of course they have no choice but to try to pull it out, because I said this was a fight to the death. They're cornered. They're cornered. They they they're they're caught. You've called them out. You know I've done my best to call them out. Others have. This whole game of leadership establishment, Alex. It's about power, for power's sake. That's Soros, and then it's about money. It's about the fact that- Why is Soros so horrible? Well, why is he so evil? They don't have any regard for human beings. They don't have any regard for human values. It's all about power. It's all about money. When you've got 90 million people in the United States of America who can't find a job, that's 90 million useless people that the elite of left and right would be happy to eliminate. Eliminate them by disease, eliminate them by And war. instead they're gonna get us all fighting with each other on race and stuff. Well, they create these issues. It's so and, clear they're so evil. I, I just. I've studied history, Doctor, as you have, and I've never seen anything in history where where there's been such a twisted 
a criminally insane group of elites in control. Because you say, yeah, it's all about just raw power. It is, but don't they see they're not going to have a world to spend all this money and power in if they keep screwing up the system? It's never bothered them. It, it, it's just pure beyond, I mean, how many billions of dollars do they need? How many... You know, how many hundreds of millions of dollars do the Clintons need to steal in their foundation? There's never enough. And what's different this time, I believe, Alex, is the people's eyes are getting open and they're seeing these games for as callous and manipulative and as evil as they are. The protesters are going to be even more exposed than were the protesters in 1968 at the Democratic Convention. It's going to turn against them because these are renta protest. These are official protests staged, rehearsed actors who show up to protest with a line and are there not because they believe in anything, but because they've been paid, they've been motivated, they've been given a printed sign, and as the George Soroses are pumping billions of dollars into making sure that this sideshow diverts the attention, gets the, you know, Megyn Kellys of the world to parrot the wrong side and blame the victims, to blame Donald Trump. You know, and it's it, it, people are going to see through it. They are seeing through it. People are understanding that, you know, once things have gotten to be this bad economically, once the borders are this open, you know, so how are you going to scare people further? Nobody has jobs. Terrorists are being brought into the cities daily. Take a look at Europe. What is the bottom line Fox plan? Because, I mean, because you have a sophisticated understanding of this. It's, it's clear for, you know, looking, it's chaos. And, and, and the suspension of logic to be able to bring in jihadis and then be the hero when they attack and take the public's freedoms because the media won't report that they brought them in, but the public can put two and two together. What is the formula? Because I really do think they're going to hit us with sleeper cell attacks that may even be run by some of these Soros-type connected groups because you've seen Soros with the Arab Spring, Soros with Ukraine. I mean, we know he's a serious operator, probably the worst the world's ever seen. I mean, a literal James Bond villain. And then when they attack, I guess, uh, bring in a civil emergency uh, or something like that, because we're working on a story here right now where we've proven they're giving them social security numbers and new names. They're bringing in jihadis who they know are terrorists, and they're giving them Section 8 housing, and they're bringing in so many. There are thousands of kids in Austin from Iraq and Syria just last year, and they claim it's only a couple hundred in all of Texas the last year, but they won't tell the governors. What I'm saying is, Dr. Corsi, this is big. It is big, it's huge, and it's important to keep exposing it because, look, look, every candidate, Democrat and Republican, except Donald Trump, you know, you've got, have supported free trade. Uh, you, you had Cruz voting for the the uh, the TPA, the trade, the free fast track to be able to get this TPP through the Trans-Pacific Partnership through Congress. Kasich has supported every free trade he's ever seen. You have... Hillary, Sanders, they all agree about open borders. They all agree we shouldn't attack or say anything about Islamic terrorists. They're all in agreement that we should have massive welfare and government spending, government debt. They're all for Washington power. The only one who says no is Donald Trump. And that's why they have to destroy Donald Trump in order to preserve this illusion that we have a democracy, that we're still anywhere near where You've known him 40 years. You talked about it years ago. He calls you up all the time on your home phone, you know, get your advice on things. Uh, you advise him on a lot of the birther stuff. I mean, what type of guy is Donald Trump? I'm going to come back, spend a few minutes on the economy, which is so important, and you're an expert on that, and, and, and then let you go, sir, and I want you to have a great weekend. But uh, what type of guy is Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump's a very brilliant guy. He's very intelligent, highly intelligent, and he's also his own person. You know, he is made it in New York. He's heard every abuse anybody can throw at him. Any, I mean, you come to New York and try to do business, you come to New York and live, you're going you're gonna to hear everything. He survived New York. And not only has he survived New York, he's loved by millions of people, hated, but also loved. And he doesn't fundamentally care because Donald Trump is true to Donald Trump. His values are his values, and he is going to call people out you know, he's going to trust his own judgment and he's going to listen to a few close advisors, but he's going to react to his own instincts, which is the way he's made his entire life. Well, what impresses me up. is that I know a lot of high powered, really smart guys that I respect. And it turns yeah. out they all know Donald Trump and he calls them to get well, their advice. Like, stay there, the like you. We'll be back. Dr. Corsi has a PhD from Harvard, top of his class when it comes to 
geopolitics. He's a historian, successful in business, successful in counterterrorism. Really smart guy, knows what he's talking about, and you heard him. A total realignment, probably one of the biggest in history, super dangerous. Also, really uh, advantageous if you know how to position yourself. You can do that in a moral way and become extremely successful, protect your wealth, protect your family. And the stuff we talk about here, there's a reason foreign heads of state listen. There's a reason we have all these high-powered guests on because, yeah, I yell and scream and there's some entertainment value to the show. And I never intended to have a carnival flair. That's just how I was. I've been doing this since I was 21. So it's been an evolution. But the Lord works in mysterious ways, and we now have globally 25, 26 million people a week that tune in or watch or get the podcast. Most talk show hosts would be bummed out that less than half that global audience is here in the U.S. We have a big audience here in the U.S., big. We have aggregators from all the different systems to know that about 13, 14 million of those people that routinely come through every week, the sites, all the platforms, and then we can tell it's different people. It's in the United States and Canada. It's North America. I am so glad because marketers go, we have a big audience, but most of it's overseas. That's good. I want ideas. I could care less that, you know, people listening in Russia aren't buying my products usually. Some of it ships there. It's about breaking the mold, changing history, fighting these tyrants that think everybody's dumb, and so they try to dumb people down further to manage everybody. I have children. I don't want them to live in a world like that. I wouldn't dumb your kids down so I could be over them. Why would you do that to mine? And then they lie about us. They demonize us. They call us racist and evil when they're the racist. And, and, and Dr. Corsi's our guest. I want to just have him finish up on a couple subjects. Uh, he helped with World Net Daily and Lou Dobbs and the Drudge Report. We were part of that, but it's not about getting credit. It's about winning holding back a lot of their North American Union integration. But now they've got this Atlantic deal. They're trying to merge that, the TPP. It just keeps coming back. But we've got to come back again and fight. So we've got Bernie Sanders saying, get the trucks off the road, you know, super fast rail. I'm sure the elites would like that. I want to get his comment on that in the economy. Am I overstating how serious it is to have the Federal Reserve say they're not going to raise interest rates because the world economy is spiraling? And the headline uh, out of uh, CNN that we have record numbers of U.S. Treasuries, U.S. debt being dumped, and they're not buying it at record levels. Here it is. Foreign governments dump U.S. debt at record rate. Market analysis show. They'll be gone in about seven, eight minutes, and I'll go to your calls. You've got the floor, sir. Um, those two questions getting into the global integration, into the world tyranny, the Pope pushing it, what all that means, and uh, the NAPA super corridor that, uh, supposedly doesn't exist, according to CNN. They fired Dobbs over, even though it's public. And then how that segues into the global economy. Well, the first of all, the, the amount of debt, the Treasury could collapse uh, any day. I mean, you could have the a, a global... Europe is going to negative interest rates, which is the new innovation. They think they can get people to pay them for holding government debt. Uh, that's the way they think they can finance increasing deficits without having to pay interest. Uh, it's all a scam. It's going to collapse. Uh, it's in the process of collapsing. I mean, part of why you asked, did Russia pull out? Uh, Russia pulled out for several reasons of Syria. There was a, they accomplished what they wanted. They propped up Assad. It was a Minimax solution. They spent the minimum amount of money to get the result. They also made a deal on the price of oil. Price of oil is going to now start going over $45 a barrel. Everybody's going to restrict supply. Saudi Arabia is going to get the help they wanted in terms of pushing at least back ISIS somewhat. Uh, it's, a, it's a great deal on the price of oil. If the price of oil stays over $40 a barrel, the economy worldwide won't collapse. The if price of oil is $30 a barrel, and the natural price of oil right now, probably about $15 to $20 a barrel. Uh, what would happen is you'd have a global collapse of massive proportions. Now, the stock market lose four to 5,000 points over a couple of <coughs> trading sessions easily could happen. Or if it didn't happen that precipitously, would happen more gradually over a couple of months. Uh, the economic situation is a house of cards. It's all built on massive, massive amounts of debt. Uh, no government in the world has any intention to make, of fulfilling its liabilities. 
and it's all a lie. They want to keep it propped up as long as they can keep it propped up. You're right, Alex. I think your show is also important. People can position themselves to understand what's not going, what's going on, not to get swept up about it, to be winners, not losers in what's going to be a global collapse. Now, Trump, well, the uh, power structures, the global elites backed up by the uh, GOP leadership in Washington, the far left of the Democratic Party, will do everything possible to destroy Trump, including Soros-funded rent riots which the media will cover like lapdogs and blame Trump for. The public isn't buying it. And I'm going to encourage and continue to encourage Donald Trump to come back on your show. I think you do a great service by and have for years, Alex. I've been on your show now going back more than 10 years and have promoted and um, supported the work you're doing. I think you're doing very important work and your message needs to be heard. I'm glad. 25 million people are listening to you. There ought to be 50 million. Well, thank you, sir. And again, it's not about us sitting here patting each other on the back. You know that. I know that. It's about, well, there's not a lot of us that know this. And, and, and I wish everybody else understood. It's starting to happen. But we don't want people to wake up and then get misdirected by Bernie Sanders or somebody into something just as bad or worse. This is an epic time to be alive. Incredible things are happening. I, I literally get chills talking about this because I've studied history and we are entering such an incredibly dangerous time we have such bad people in charge because you got to be bad to not care about people and then from there you start enjoying being mean and they really are nasty horrible people uh and and we've got a chance to stop them if we come together and educate others and so that's why i compliment Corsi. he's complimenting me because because we're in a fight folks i mean i know he wants to beat the globalist i know he doesn't want his family to be enslaved it's just a normal male instinct if you're a good person and we're certainly not perfect, but I mean, the globalists are so bad, folks. If you knew how bad they were, if you're a new listener, you wouldn't make jokes about it. You wouldn't know how conspiracy theories and all this stuff. This is all public. It's dangerous. And they are positioning a world collapse that they think is going to bring in total control. And the way they've engineered it, there's no way to get out of it now. It's designed to give them more control, but it's like a black hole. Have they spun this thing too big, too wide, and too deep? And, and that's what I want to hit in closing as a top expert on banking and global markets, you predicted what's happened. We're now entering it. How serious is this domino effect with them dumping the treasuries? It's very serious, and it could. I mean, this whole thing, the economic system can collapse any day. Globalists decide they want it to collapse. It's that simple. But, you know, the point I want to make uh, is that, you know, Alex, once people have seen, you know, the globalists, they've seen the evil for as pathetically hideous and ridiculous as it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's an old joke. It's a Soros, you know, in the wheelchair with his oxygen wanting to control the world. It's a, it's a hideous joke. And where Donald Trump is so powerful is he's exposing it. You know, the little Rubio and the, you know, exposing Rubio as being a tool of the establishment the way he was. Uh, the, what he will do to Hillary, his great, ability is to make people see to the ridiculous nature of the globalists, how little power they really have, and to make them, you know, a parody of themselves, to make them hideous, to make them a joke. Because it is a joke to think that any small group of elitists could control the world or want to control the world, want to know every conversation through the NSA, all of these other issues, have the entire America be unemployed because we've shipped the jobs off to China and Indonesia and who knows where for a few bankers and multinational corporations to benefit. Once people see it, you, they can't go back. The lie is apparent and it's the exposing of the lie, which is what, you know, you do every day. I'm trying to do every day what, you know, people of goodwill are trying to do. And I think Trump is going to succeed because he has a gift doesn't care if he's not politically correct. Doesn't care if Megyn Kelly objects to him. He doesn't understands care. it's all a hoax, and just by being right. truly confident, uh, they've tried to banish true male energy from the world. I mean, they hate it. And they've tried to banish true femininity because, they, because it's just too strong. They want us to worship the state like it's Kim Jong-un, and it is an old joke. It is a joke. It doesn't deliver. Freedom it delivers. Is. The only problem right. is, doctor... It produces so many goods and so many services. Our kids and grandkids get spoiled, myself included, compared to my grandfather's. How do we stop that? How do we culturally have freedom and then not turn into slobs? 
Well, it's it's one of those moments where people have got to start by saying no. It's you know the the network movie opened the window and said no, I'm not going to take it anymore. People are saying that, and you know, watch Megyn Kelly and all the others have an earphone and they're they're all told what to say. You think anybody on Fox or any other network? is on that network without being programmed by an Ailes or his counterpart and every other network. It's all a corporate line. You know, turn on one channel or the other. What's good about the current is like when, you know, we were able to with the swip boats, John O'Neill turn on for, for a while there, swip boat, swip boat, swip boat. Finally, you've got Donald Trump on every channel. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. And it's breaking through the paradigm. You break through the globalist paradigm, show it for the lie that it is, make it appear to be ridiculous and, and deserving of scorn and derision, and let Donald Trump continue to call it out. I thought, well, I we, we gave Obama another Nobel Prize last hour as a joke. Uh, sir, uh, worldnetdaily.com, WND.com, all your books can be found there, JeromeCorsi.com. Um, in closing, I think they're going to try to have the RNC, they've said they are, and they've had the head of the RNC Rules Committee go on TV and say, oh, your vote doesn't matter. Again, and then giggling about it, the disconnect, it's like Marie Antoinette didn't really say let them eat cake when they were starving, but they said she did. Well, no, they're actually saying let them eat cake. I think in their hubris, I think they're crazy enough to try to steal it. And if that doesn't work, uh, I think they're going to try to kill Trump. I mean, they're trying to mainline on everything from uh, NBC to the New York Times saying kill him, and then nobody's getting in trouble. Uh, I really think, I, I just don't know, I don't know, I mean, maybe they want to start a right-wing civil war because they know they can't beat us politically. Uh, I'm just really concerned. I just have a bad feeling. Well, first of all, let's hope all the politicians and pray they all stay safe because it's, it's catastrophic to have violence and it, no one should want it for any reason. Uh, the point is, though, that you've got some voices. You've got Newt Gingrich. Pat Buchanan and the Republican Party saying to the establishment, you know, the gig is up. McConnell, Boehner, you, you know, take your cocaine and your marijuana and go smoke it on the golf course if that's what you want to do. But get out of Washington, D.C. The power structures have got to be closed down. The K Street money got to start firing the U.S. government by department. I don't care what department. And that's why start. they're scared of Trump. They know people like you advise him. Yeah, and say, you know, pick a, pick a department. If you can't fire them. They move the State Department to Nome, Alaska, and, and let them have their civil service, let them show up there. You know, move the Postal Department down in the middle of the Yuma Desert. <laughs> you know, decentralize the government. These people want their jobs in the federal government, fine. But, you know, you're showing up in bedrock tomorrow, and there's not going to be an air-conditioned bus. And see how many people stay in the federal government. You've got to get this government back what the founders had in mind were we the people um, with a Second Amendment and a strong First Amendment, not being required to be politically correct, you know, rule our families and our homes and try to make a living and get through this life respectfully without being imprisoned by some globalist who wants to send your job to China while telling you it's a good idea. And I think Trump is calling out that game and making it appear as ridiculous as it's always been. I agree. So let me ask you this then. What is What will their next step to try to block Trump be? Because they, they seem to be so arrogant, even though they got sophisticated propaganda, that when the Pope and the Communist Chinese and everybody and Vicente Fox and everyone says you can't have Trump, the American people go, wow, why is that? I, I mean, that's again, it just shows they don't get that Trump's only a manifestation of how hated the system is and that basically it's already collapsed it's it's dead and doesn't know it's the walking dead yeah it's that's correct but you know they've tried everything global warming which is a joke open borders which is a joke you know you can't say anything about islam which is a joke you know you can say anything about anybody you want to say you're politically correct or incorrect it's first amendment and you know the the point is people are sick of it they're tired of it because they listen to the lies and you get you know, kids in school, colleges, might as well close the colleges if they're going to be as intolerant bastions of stupid thinking leftism. And, you know, the point people are sick of it, and they're tired of it. I think it's come to that point. The next thing they'll try to do is throw a major global economic crisis. You can easily throw the world into an economic banking collapse, or you'll have a 9-11 terrorist attack or staged event that will be sure. terrific. You know, people will be more terrorized than they were in 9/11, and 
and try to push everybody into non-thinking. And, you know, basically we've got to prepare people that these are the last resorts that the, the globalists and the leftists will, and, and by the way, the far right multinational corporations and the left socialists and communists are one party. Just like they work with the Muslims, the radical Muslims, because they love anything totalitarian like Carol Quigley As wrote. As they were in Hitler, they were one party. You know, Hitler, national socialism, it was of the left. You know, the Democratic Party through the, through Strom Thurmond walking out of the 48th convention, the Dixocrats, they were the segregationists. The Democratic Party is not the party of racial integration or racial justice. They're the party of total balkanization. And the Republicans aren't perfect, but they they tried the party of Lincoln. Oh. They tried with the Civil and Rights the Act. It's the Rockefeller Republicans. It's the bankers, the multinational corporations. It's Prescott Bush raising money for Hitler to put, you know, the German manufacturers together with the U.S. manufacturers. Sure. Henry Ford's ideas of the Autobahn and the... It's all the same thing. Dr. Corsi, Autobahn amazing. I, 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 I uh, hope you write another book because I've, I've basically read them all. I, but one last thing because you brought this up. I see them, if Trump gets in office, the way to counter him is they would implement an economic crisis and claim something he did triggered it, just like they blame the, 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 the tariffs that came in once the Great Depression started. But I know he's sophisticated enough, but I sure hope that he does talk to more people like you. I know he's talked to you over the years because they are going to pull anything they can to try to kill nationalism and discredit it. And whether folks like Trump or not, he now carries the mantle of masculinity, of nationalism, of Americana. Is that not accurate? Yes, and Donald Trump's already there. He doesn't need my advice or anybody else's advice. He's already there. That's what makes him so good. He was there to start with. He's still there. So it's behind the scenes, he knows about the New World Order, because I'm told he does. He's got it down. Donald Trump understands this. He understands it from the inside. He's had to deal with the bankers his entire life. Donald Trump is still somebody who would own, build, Apartment buildings, and he goes stop with the tenants and say, how are you doing? Everybody okay here? Hires the best union laborers, pays top dollar. Donald Trump's a good man. All right, that's what I'm told by everybody that knows him. Thank you, Dr. Corsi. Amazing job. Have a great weekend. Thank you. That guy is just so smart. We're going back with your call. Stay with us.